Hello everyone, I'm Melissa Dudan. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Trending Vegas. I'm joined by a portion of our city's communication team, including Jace Radke and Natasha Shahani. And you guys, we're sitting three I feet know. apart. I feel I like I've missed you guys so much. <laughs> Jace, you're not <laughs> off in the I, distance. I even put on deodorant today just because of this. Wow, okay, good to know, good to know. All right guys, how's it been for you guys, busy? It's an understatement. Really? Yeah, <laughs> busy, a little busy. Yeah, things are opening back up, so we have a lot of events at the city now that right. we're doing. You know, a lot of outdoor events and different different things that we're publicizing. Right, and I do want to mention to everybody at home watching that while we are taping this, we're taping it on a Tuesday, and we're actually waiting for the county commissioners to decide what is going to happen with all of the mask mandates and social distancing and capacity rules starting June first. So. While we're taping this, that's going on. So if you're watching this in the future, things might change, just FYI. So let's get right into this. In early May, the CDC came out and said that if you are fully vaccinated, that you no longer have to wear a mask. Here's a look. This is from the CDC. If you are fully vaccinated against COVID-19, you can resume activities without wearing a mask or staying six feet apart, except where required by federal, state, local, tribal, or territorial laws, including local businesses and workplace guidance. Our governor soon followed with this tweet. Nevada will be following the latest recommendations on masking from the CDC. NV Health Response will be issuing more information later today. I strongly urge all Nevadans who have not yet taken advantage of the COVID-19 vaccine to do so as soon as possible. Now, German Sanchez answered, how is this going to be monitored? Do you have to carry your vaccination card all the time? And then there is this video. I've been waiting so long to light my mask on fire and <laughs> never wear it again. <laughs> Freedom. So this was really interesting. Um, when it happened, everyone was very, very excited. But I think it's there's still some confusion as to, well, how do you know? What if people are lying? How do you prove? So what are you guys, are you guys getting questions like that? We're getting, a, there's a little confusion, right? And um, I wouldn't burn my mask quite yet because there are still some federal guidelines that when you're traveling, when you're on public transportation, when you're at the airport, when you're on a plane, you're still required to wear them as of right now. Um, just questions, right? And of wondering like, which businesses does it apply to? The day it came out, you had multiple resorts saying, no masks, no masks, no masks, but no enforcement either. Be and this is something that we've been even just questioning internally. You can't ask, it's against HIPAA. Right. So it, it is just a trust system. And I think you're seeing um, people, corporations take stances like no mask, but then governments like ca in California, California has asked all of their businesses and corporations to follow what California wants to do. So there's a lot of, there's still a lot of unknown. There's still people who are hesitant to do it and right, everything is personal preference. So it's great. I, I, I went to cycle class without my mask for the first time and it was amazing to just be able not to suck in my mask every right. time I had to take a breath. But, but it, you can still see like people are like, Hesitant. is this okay? Is this not okay? What's going to happen? I, I did see a tweet that I thought was really interesting and it said, can we normalize the mask during cold and flu season? Right. Can this just be a normal thing? Because it's been a year since I've had a cold or the flu. And I think I've mentioned that before on this broadcast that I haven't been sick, knock on wood, mm -hmm. in a really long time. And I do credit that to the mask wearing. Jace, what are you seeing on social? Just, you know, people like Natasha said are trying to get through this transition. It's really a transition period. And I think the hard part that we are seeing is people, you know, have dealt with this, you know, the restrictions and the mask for more than a year at this point. So it's the, the changes are coming so fast by comparison, right. you know, when, when we were going the other way and we had to put new restrictions or safety protocols in, it was usually a gradual situation. You know, like this week we're gonna go up to 50% and then in another month we'll go up mm -hmm. to, the, and now this was like one day, right. everything changed. But, yeah, but I think we also have to realize that private businesses can make their own, right. they can make their they own can. rules. And so that's interesting. I went to Lifeguard Arena in Henderson this past weekend to watch my son play hockey and I did not have my mask on. I walked in, was sipping on some coffee because it was an early game. And somebody stopped me at the door and said, ma'am, I need you to put your mask on. And I said, oh, sure, no, no problem. I mean, that is your rule. 
I will abide by your rules, no problem. But I think that that's going to be happening more and organizations need time to sit down and discuss what are we going to do? How are we going to handle this? Like the county is doing today, right, yeah. right Jason? I saw that at, you know, I went to the grocery store over the weekend on Friday morning and they, at that particular grocery store, they were still requiring masks. So fine, like you're saying, everybody needs to follow the rules. So I wore a mask, but then I forgot something at the grocery store. I went back to a different grocery store on Saturday morning, no mask. So right. I think, you know, also with big corporations and business, it takes a little, it takes a little time for them to filter down exactly what they're going to change. Right. So we asked you all on Instagram, what you all were seeing in terms of masks and businesses. And here were some of your responses. First of all, we just got a normal yes. Then we got some are, some aren't. Then from BCH Mark, businesses will have to follow the new mask mandate to avoid missing out on turnover. And then Fizzywood writes, definitely keeping in place at Home Depot and Target, especially are keeping masks on nationwide. But that's changed, mm -hmm. right? Target yeah. has actually changed. So it's always changing. And then the company I work for works one-on-one -on -one with children with autism. They have decided to keep masks. And then they've kept unmasked who are unvaccinated, put others at risk. No way to know if vaccinated. Others say should be the law. And then the other one is the problem is that anti-maskers will lie and say they are so they can do what they want. And that is definitely a fear as we move forward. But we're going to see how that's monitored because I heard that some businesses maybe could ask for a vaccination card, but they have to maintain privacy laws. So I think there's going to be a lot of attorneys involved in the next few months yep. to see how it all works out. All right, guys, let's move on to our next topic, still related to COVID-19, and that is the announcement that the FDA has said children 12 and over can now get the two-dose Pfizer vaccine. Here's a look. This from President Biden. Kids 12 and up can now get the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. Parents, protect your kids, your family, and your community. Get your kids 12 and up vaccinated. Then there is this response. What about long-term side effects? My son has special needs, and how do we know that there will not be any side effects? But then there are parents that don't have any sort of hesitancy. Thank you. My 12-year-old has her appointment on Friday for her first dose. Myself and my 16-year-old are already fully vaccinated. And then I thought this was interesting because the conversation goes on and on about, well, kids don't get the COVID as serious as other people do, but they still are carriers. So I think that's interesting. We have to remember that they can pass it to people who are more at risk for complications. Well, and they're not just carriers. They are getting it. And Correct. we are seeing um, a higher population of younger, of, of youth in the hospitals and even dying from the disease, right? So it's not like they're immune to it naturally. Mm -hmm. um, and we saw both things on social from both sides of like, sign me up, I'm taking my kid today to what's going on and I think the best advice that we continue to give on social after talking to NB Health Response, talking to the Southern Nevada Health District is consult your local doctor, mm -hmm. consult your primary care physician, consult your pediatrician. They are, they've got the tools that they can help you, they can talk through scenarios, they can help you determine whether or not you feel comfortable with this and if you're, it's time for your kid to get it. Um, so if you have questions, please contact your local pediatrician and talk through all of your concerns with them because they can help you figure this out for yourself. Right, help you through in terms of side effects or right. what you should or should not be fearful of. Like you said, answer the questions. Jace, what are you seeing in terms of adding 12 year old to the list of getting vaccinated? You know, it's interesting because you know, we kind of hit a plateau on vaccination. So, you know, by adding this group in, it's a new group and I'm sure some people will rush out to get their children vaccinated. Others will not. It really comes down to, you know, a parental decision like Natasha's talking about. And, you know, I, you can see it from both sides. You know, you could see, we've seen some people on social saying, listen, my kid hasn't caught this for 14 months. Mm -hmm. Like, I, you know, and now, 50% of the population in Clark County is vaccinated, including a lot of those higher at risk people in the older age groups. So, right. you know, so they just have to weigh it out and, and make a decision, but it's, you know, that's part of being a parent, right? You know, and I think the health district was concerned for a long time that we were not gonna reach that 60% threshold. And now that might just be a moot point as we go to June 1st, we'll have to see what the county decides. but. I, I do think it's interesting that more people can get vaccinated now. It, it is going to be interesting to see 
a younger age group get vaccinated as we move into a new school year and what that means for schools because I need my child in school. <laughs> you know, so I'm just going to put that out there. But we wanted to ask you all if you were hesitant to get the COVID-19 vaccine and why or why not? Because as Jay said, because of the Johnson Johnson news that came out, we did see some vaccination numbers go down. So we wanted to ask you if you got it, why or why not? Are you hesitant? Here are some of your responses. First, no, I am vaccinated. Nope, already vaxxed. No, I read up on mRNA to understand it better. People need to be educated on what it is. Then we have this one. No, I work at the Valley Hospitals across town and I'm seeing terrible side effects. Interesting. <laughs> Mitch writes, no, because I'm not a moron. Uh, Sam says, no, infectious disease scientists are experts. The vaccine is safe. Others say, no, I'm hesitant on our future because people are hesitant to get vaccinated. And then Miss Claudia writes, I was never hesitant. I'm fully vaxxed. So it's really interesting to see people's take on it. It'll be interesting as we go into the future. All right, guys, now on to another controversial topic, paid parking. That's right, it is back at MGM Resorts International. And of course, people are upset about it. Here's a look, 8 News Now tweeted, Justin, paid self parking is headed back to MGM Resorts. A spokesman confirmed to 8 News Now Monday. Now of note though, the first three hours will be free for locals. This person writes, really? Parking fees? So long, free Vegas hotel parking. MGM resorts to resume parking fees in June. Now, this guy writes, nope, locals just don't even park there. Should be absolutely free. And then this discussion, as it always does, turns into boycott this property and boycott this, that <laughs> property. And I've got to say that I have been on the strip and other places around town that have opened up and prices are just so high and you're going, do I not remember them being this high or are they really just going up because businesses have been closed for so long and parking is just an addition to that. But still this, you guys hear a lot about parking. It, yeah. It's a controversial topic. And it's not just strip parking, it's our own parking downtown and um, it, there is no parking. I right. mean like people are out and they're supporting businesses and they're getting back out there and it's so great. But I've circled the block at the Arts District for about 20 minutes before I was like, do I go home or do I keep going to find parking? Right. Um, and I know parking is a big priority for us. We're looking to build more lots. Um, but we do have to charge, right? Because the lots cost money and you do have to to pay to maintain them and to right. secure them and stuff like that. So it is a debate and I struggle too. I'm, you can ask Brandy Stanley, our parking manager. I email her about like, can we offer free parking on this day? Can we offer free parking? And she's <laughs> like, you, Natasha. Natasha. <laughs> she's like, Natasha, well, like, and she, and she explains it to me and I'm like, uh, okay, I get it. But you know, I, have, I'm fighting. I'm have, fighting for free parking. You guys, Natasha's out there fighting yes. for you guys, but we do have bills to pay here at the city yeah. of Las Vegas. Chase, what are you seeing? What do you think about this debate? Well, first I would just say for those folks going to the Arts District or downtown, we have a big, huge city hall parking garage. It's not that expensive to park there. It's usually empty in the evenings when you're probably going to those places. 500 Main Street. S right? Short walk <laughs> over yeah. there, lovely walk. So, you know, that's, that's an option, but I mean, I mean, you know, parking fees for people that have lived in Las Vegas for a while, like me, you know, us oldsters remember the days where it was, you know, the casinos just wanted to get you in to gamble, right? And they didn't care. Free parking, 99 cent shrimp cocktail, 4.99 buffets. Well, those days are gone. Like right. we're a big city now, just like San Francisco or LA and parking costs money in those cities, just like here, the trade-off is, you know, now we have world-class dining, world-class shopping, world-class attractions. We have major league sports. So that's kind of the trade-off, you know. And the other positive side of this is, yeah, parking fees are back on the Strip. But that also means the Strip is coming back. So that's and the good more side. more jobs are coming and that, right. all, all of the above. Okay, so small price to pay. Hey, three hours. Get in, eat your dinner, yeah, get, get out, out, time yourself. It's, right. it's, not, it's not horrible. So, I mean, at least they're doing, my thing is, no one loves to pay for parking. I don't like to go to a parking and have to, you know, dish out $25 at the end of the night to park my car. But I am grateful that MGM Resorts is giving that three hour window to locals. I think that is considerate, considering yeah. that they got to start making money again, guys. So, all right, guys, great topics. Thanks so much. All right, guys, it is heating up, and before you know it, we'll be experiencing those triple digit temperatures. When we come back, some tips on how to beat the heat.
I'll be seeing you in all the old familiar places. So I've thought a lot about what I miss the most during this pandemic. And the thing that I miss the most is you. I love playing to a live audience. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like feeling the love that you guys give to us and we're trying to give to you. And I just can't wait to get back to that. All these places that we stand in, the Ryman, Opry House, those places are just places if you don't put the people in them. The COVID-19 vaccines are going to help us all get back to the moments we miss. It's totally normal to have questions. I did too. That's why it's so important to get informed. There's a lot of talk out there about the vaccines. So ask your doctor and get the facts. It's up to you. This is what too much sounds like. This is what stress feels like. And this is what help feels like. If you've lost a job, worry about your next meal, or have trouble making it through the day, we can help. Text STRESS to 211211 to find a solution. Welcome back everyone. As we have all been feeling, it is heating up and fast here in the Valley. And with this weather comes some definite heat related challenges and concerns. Now to join me to talk about how to best protect yourself and your loved ones is firefighter paramedic Sherry Gordon. Sherry, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me, Melissa. So I think a lot of people don't understand, especially if you're a newcomer to Las Vegas, because we have so many, this heat will sneak up on you and it happens fast. Really quickly. So let's talk about what heat stroke is and what heat exhaustion is. Can you help kind of differentiate that for us? Yes, so they're both heat related illnesses um, and it happens when uh, you're exposed to excessive temperatures, really high heat. Um, heat exhaustion, you'll get nausea, vomiting, You'll have some cool, moist skin because your body's still trying to cool itself, fatigue, and if left untreated, that can progress to heat stroke, which is really serious, okay. and it is life-threatening. Okay. So with heat stroke, uh, those symptoms, uh, your body temperature can really spike uh, 103 degrees Fahrenheit or greater. So you have a fever. Yeah. Okay. And. Uh, again, nausea, vomiting, um, your skin will be hot and dry and red because now your body is so hot that it's not able to cool itself. Okay. Um, also, you'll develop confusion and uh, it can lead into unconsciousness. And so that's super dangerous because when your body temperature spikes like that, um, your brain is affected uh -huh. um, and all of you know, your other organs, your heart, your liver, your lungs, all of that is getting so hot that your body's starting to shut down. Is there some advice you give people, like for myself, I'm a parent and I know yes. that I've been in Las Vegas enough to know that in the middle of July, I'm not taking the kids to the playground at 1230 from noon till about 5 p.m. We're not outside, it's just too hot. It's too hot. But is there a threshold or a certain amount of minutes you recommend parents pull their kids out of the sun or stay out of the sun? Do you guys have thresholds like that? Well, children, the elderly, um, people with disabilities, they're typically the most vulnerable. Right. And because it is so hot, we recommend just staying in the sun for periods of time. Definitely try to um, not be in the sun during midday okay. when it's the hottest temperature. Um, things that you can do uh, to help shade or cool your loved one, uh, make sure that the clothing you wear is loose fitting. Make sure that it's um, light in color. Mm -hmm. You can shade uh, your babies with a hat or an umbrella. 
Um, but m most importantly, you just want to make sure that you are hydrated right. and that you're drinking plenty of fluids throughout the day. Well, and that kind of leads me to my next question. If you are better hydrated, which I need to do a better job myself of doing. We all do. Right, so if, if I, you're better hydrated, can you withstand the sun a little bit longer? Does your body let you kind of adjust more? So obviously if you're better hydrated, you will have a better chance of being able to stay out in the sun. But that's dependent on a lot of factors. It could be your age, it could be how physically fit you are, if you have any underlying medical conditions. So staying hydrated, number one, uh, mm -hmm. will help, but also you want to make sure that you don't consume things that will dehydrate you. So soda, uh. coffee, <gasps> and all those energy drinks that we all love to drink, right. those are dehydrating. It's gonna dehydrate you even more. So what about like juice and stuff for the kids? Fruit juices, like even fruit, like fresh fruit. Watermelon, all watermelon, that Watermelon, you're getting, you're getting fluids from that. Okay. It's fresh, it's healthy but you want to maintain your water intake. You don't wanna drink when you're thirsty because when you drink when you're thirsty, it, it's already too late. Right. So, you know, becoming overwhelmed by the heat can happen within minutes or within hours. It just depends on your overall general health. And I was unaware that, I always knew that water was always a better choice mm -hmm. or something that's gonna hydrate you, but I was unaware that a Coke or something like that could yeah. dehydrate you. Soda as well, it has caffeine in it. Okay. So um, sports drinks are good, okay. but uh, that has sugar content, mm -hmm. which is not bad because you want to replace the salts, the minerals. Right. So if you do uh, an even balance to replace that stuff that you're sweating out throughout right. the day right. is helpful. So let's talk about if you're in a situation where you start to exhibit some heat exhaustion signs or even mm -hmm. some heat stroke signs, what are some things that you can do immediately mm -hmm. to cool down the body? Yes, so definitely you wanna get out of that hot environment. Mm -hmm. So if you can go indoors, that's the best thing that you can do. Okay. Preferably if, you're, if you can get into an air conditioned space, mm -hmm. um, definitely you want to remove any clothing, okay. tight fitting clothing or any clothing in general. You can take a cool shower, you can take a cool bath, you can get in front of an oscillating fan. Mm -hmm. um, you can also take uh, wet towels mm -hmm. and put them around your neck, you can put them around your head. Uh, but the main thing is to remove yourself from that hot environment so your body can have a chance to start to cool down and, and get to a normal temperature. Now one of the things I've heard, and I've actually done it on myself, because I've been in a situation where I just got overheated on a story, as a matter of fact, out shooting oh, a story. Okay. But you know, getting some, um, I got some ice packs or some cold towels mm -hmm. and I put them under my arms. Armpits. Does mm -hmm. that help, that or is that, was that in my head? <laughs> no, not at all. So you can, you know, put it on the back of your neck. Um, you can wrap it around your head, but okay. that will help to cool your body temperature as well. Or if you can sustain, a cold pack underneath your Oh well, I mean when you're desperate your you do it. <laughs> so. so let's talk a little bit about the heat and cars because we years ago I did a challenge with Metro mm -hmm. as, and our fire department was out there as well where it was contained but we they wanted to show us what it was like to get in a car and how quickly the temperature rises. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little bit about that and the dangers of leaving a child in the car, leaving a pet in the car, even if you think it's a for a few minutes. Yes, so never leave a child or a pet unattended in a vehicle. 80% uh, of the increase in temperature inside a vehicle happens within the first 10 minutes. So even if you have windows cracked, you're thinking that that's gonna delay the process of that vehicle heating up, mm -hmm. it's not and it's going to, it can reach over 100 degrees within minutes. And even if it's on, uh, say, like a, a cooler mid-temperature day, mm -hmm. the inside of that car is going to be greater than the outside temperature. One kid every nine days, roughly, um, it's the average of 39 kids per year die from being left in these hot vehicles. Oh so, gosh. and once their temperature, their core body temperature reaches 107 degrees, you, they could succumb to, to that. So um, never leave your child in the car. And we're talking minutes. We're not talking happens, half an hour. We're talking minutes. This is within minutes. So 
Um, that's why it's really important to be mindful of uh, making sure that you communicate maybe to family members who is going to be removing the child from the car. If you can get into a habit of, say, whenever you come to your destination, um, just make it a habit of going to the back door and opening the back door. Right. Every time you park. Um, if you can, put a, a diaper bag or something in the front seat with you, almost as a, a cue that I do have my child with me. Right. And you know, people are busy, mm -hmm. they get distracted, uh, so it happens, but um, it is preventable. What about animals in the car? Do they, you know, a lot of, you can't take animals in certain places, mm -hmm. they, an owner will leave them in there for a few minutes just to run in, but do they have the same kind of setup internally as a child does? Uh, our furry friends, yeah, family members, our furry family mm -hmm. members, they, they can't sweat like humans, so it's hard for them to cool down. That's why they pant. Mm -hmm. um, it is illegal in Nevada to leave your animal unattended in a vehicle, and you can be uh, prosecuted. Even with uh, the windows cracked? Even with the windows cracked. Okay. So they're just as vulnerable. If you do have a pet that does not have access, to come in and out of your home throughout the day, you're at work, uh, there are things you can do to keep them comfortable. Mm -hmm. So you can put ice in their water, mm -hmm. you can freeze ice the night before, which is what I like to do, right. and put it in their um, dispenser, their water dispenser, and make sure they just have a shaded area somewhere where they can retreat to, because right. when we get hot, they get hot too. You should and not chain them up in, in the sun. Absolutely, and just, absolutely not. not. Absolutely, they need to have somewhere where they can go, where they can get relief. Just mm -hmm. like we want to come in the indoors from being outside when it's 110 degrees. Well, just a reminder also, if you walk your dog, you know, it's best to do it in the very, very early morning or, or in the evening, evening because the pads the of their feet are very sensitive. Very sensitive. And you can purchase, they have booties that you can purchase for your pets to protect um, their pads because right. they are super sensitive and the ground is hot enough where they can get burns right and oh. you know that's painful so Absolutely. um so those are some of the things that can be done to help keep your pet comfortable okay any yeah. other tips you have before we go uh just stay hydrated mm -hmm. no energy drinks yeah. and just never leave your children or pets unattended in a vehicle for any length of time it's just not worth it all right, Sherry, great job. So, thank you so much. Thank you, Melissa, for having me. Absolutely. It's been fun. All right, guys, well, that's going to do it for Trending Vegas. You can get in on the conversation by following us on social media at City of Las Vegas. Your comments could be used on our future shows. And remember, you can always catch us streaming on our Go Vegas app on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire. Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you next time. Stay cool out there.